So what's going on dammers, my name is Meho and welcome to another video in which we're going to discuss do you have to do native or to do not native and that essentially means that should you go over with native application development that is Java, Kotlin, Swift, Objective-C and stuff like that or should you go with frameworks like React Native, Flutter, um, basically like that that's I guess the only there's a native base so there's a lot of stuff like that right so let's just go over through some of the important points which I think you should know even if you're a company even if you're a sm small startup if you're an individual developer it matters what you're choosing your initial base framework initial base tech stack as because that would lay down the foundation of your startup your company your product whatever you're creating so it's important to discuss on it so let's uh, let's start with story of code dam so what i did basically um i decided i was in a dilemma to go with react native or native now honestly i haven't worked a lot with swift with xcode with apple side so when i was thinking about it i was like you know a little bit inclined toward native then the other day i was like no just go with let's just go with react native um then i finally came to conclusion like react native let's just do it let's just do let's just go with it and see what happens after a couple of weeks i'm like damn i'm done with this react native it's too difficult it's throwing out errors all the times so it's basically crashing out it, the compiled version the transpiled version of javascript is crashing there are unknown errors, you know, it's hard to debug through logcat. Everything seems messy. Hmm. Then I proceed forward. I start hunting Google. I take a look at GitHub. I take a look at GitHub issues. I see that other people also are having problems. I you know monitor code. I make sense of code. I learn. I I see what's happening with the code. I dig deeper and deeper and deeper into the code. See uh, where's the problem is and I fix them and gradually it starts to make sense, right? I see where the things are going so I'm able to like You know know what's happening behind the scenes where am I doing it wrong where the library has done wrong something and how to fix it Then sometimes again, there are stuff like no way this is not making sense it does not even you know Sometimes your builds would crash on production while they're working extremely good on development. Sometimes your builds would crash when you're debugging JS and other times they would not. So it kind of is a headache and pain in ass. So you would just think, no way, just go native. That's the best way because I have done applications and games both in native and React native. So I know that native kind of is a blessing but there are obvious problems with natives which we are going to discuss later on so um the other moment we are like going with uh, native but then i'm like wait a second this thing i guess i have seen somewhere before oh yeah that was the stack overflow question that was this github issue so yeah it makes sense to check it out one more time so stuff like that happens then i'm like no react native is the choice it is the game and i'm gonna make through it with react native itself so you can see the graph kind of looks like this i just picked this up through a quick google search when you start when you will start with react native you would be like your confidence would hit an all-time high you would be like man this is the thing this is the future and then when your first error happens which you do not know how to fix you would be like on the cliff of confusion <laughs> then you would have like desert of despair and then you would be like oh god this sucks this this is unbelievable i cannot do it i cannot do it hmm wait a second yeah this makes sense then you would hit like the upswing of awesomeness and you would be like all the way up and just remove this job ready whatever your mission is right so if you ask me i am um you can say somewhere right here i do not know what happens after this but i know i have come 
till this part. So I have like crossed up swing of awesomeness for React Native. And you can say I'm kind of like at this point right now, right? So eventually, when you cross the desert of despair for React Native, you're going to feel proud of yourself as I'm feeling till now with React Native, right? Let's just get into a little bit of insights. That's all for the business people. So not, not really all. I'm going to show you when you should use React Native and you should not. But let's just get fit into differences the traditional way. So we do not have a lot of advantages for either of um, the technologies here because I just wanted to pick up some which are like the most useful to be known. Native advantages is obviously you have you get mature technologies on your hands. You have languages like Java and Objective-C, which are there from a lot of years, have been extensively developed by some of the best developers of the world. You have extensive community support. You have extensive large community. You have basically solutions to all the problems you might face all along the way because you are honestly down the line a very um you know a very very later person you can say who's using this tech so whatever problem you're facing there's a very 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 high chance that someone else in the past has faced and asked question on internet and uh, you would be able to find a solution for that so that that really you know something is something which is um very important for someone who's like uh, always running into errors all the time and you know it's not really familiar with the, um, the language he's coding in or she's coding in whatever so that's the thing the third point which native i think is good is supports all native apis well because it's native so that kind of makes sense because we're gonna use this argument inside the disadvantages so that i wrote i just wrote this so native APIs obviously would support the native APIs and that is like anything, you can do basically anything when you have the native code in hand, right? React Native, on the other hand, shares some spectacular advantages. That is the shared code basis, which is the best advantage, period. So with React Native, you can develop almost applic an application for almost every platform not just android and ios as long as you have the bridge for that application so react native basically works on the concept of bridging you write javascript javascript runs as javascript only but there's a bridge which communicate which lets duplex communication between native code and javascript so um once you have a bridge for, let's say, Symbian OS, for, let's say, BlackBerry, for, let's say, um, what else do we have? Uh, let's say anything for any operating system, right, for XYZ. So your JavaScript could use that native bridge to communicate and get things done. Super fast debugging is, uh, if you have ever used React Native, you know. You can enable hot reloading, you can enable right, live reloading, um, but hot reloading is kind of like very, um, you know, useful if you are creating UI changes, if you are changing colors, placing elements, you know, they here and there. Live reload is more like when you save it, it would automatically reload your app. So it kind of like is okay, okay-ish, but hot reloading is a big deal, right? Then finally, we have a very low learning curve for the web developers. So um, when I used React Native myself, I did not really came from an only web developer background. I had used Android as well. But uh, it seems to me that it is very useful and very easy for web developers to learn, especially, especially if you're coming from React.js. Because React Native obviously uses React.js for its its state management for its basic underlying framework. So if you're coming from React JS, it's like you have done like 50% of the work, 50 to 70% of the work for React Native already. So these were the advantages. Let's just talk about some disadvantages of both of them. Let's start with React Native only this time. Now, um, 
what I see is with React Native, the deal is it's hard to work with once you get into the native code. Now you would not really want to get into the native code because obviously that's the reason you chose React Native in the first place. But sometimes there's no alternative. React Native, as I said, in the um, advantages of native supports all native APIs. React Native does not, right? So you have very common APIs supported, some common APIs supported as well, some not so common APIs supported as well. But if you want a very specific API, for example, if you want to like display notifications, you would not get it out of the box from React Native. You would have to configure native code in such a way you are able to display notifications on a device. So in that cases, in cases like those, you have to dive into native code. And obviously, if you are someone who has not, never worked with Java, or has never worked with Objective-C, you're going to have a hard time figuring out how to do it. Right? Um, well, you might not have a hard time for the notifications because a lot of modules, native modules, a lot of modules also come as native modules and you just have to link them with a simple command named React Native Link. But uh, trust me, this command is evil, right? Sometimes it works, sometimes it creates mess. So it's better if you're going into native modules to know what you're dealing with. And to know what you're dealing with, you need to understand the native code a little bit. So at the end of the day, it is hard to work once you get into native code. Let's keep it to that. You have to understand platform specifics to implement custom native functions. This is like this is like a very advanced point, right? So um, I'll just explain you the other day what happened. So for the code dam, um, what I'm doing right now to display HTML formatted, uh, not HTML formatted. Let me just rephrase it real quick. So to display, let's say. Um, you can say code mirror if you are aware of that. So code mirror is a syntax highlighter for code. So if you want to display that, what you have to do is basically either find a module, um, native module which supports syntax highlighting. Unfortunately, I did not get any. So what I did is uh, I tried to implement a custom native module like that, and you know React Native provides documentation and stuff like that. But it really gets you know messy if you start implementing your custom functionalities because again it comes down to um, you know having developing separate code for both the platforms so you get back to native only even when you're using React Native. So that's a disadvantage. Again, it's finally not suitable for heavy performance applications because you know your communication is happening over a bridge. And it takes time to cross over the bridge to, for messages to cross over the bridge. Yes, it's super fast, but again, you cannot expect your game to be running at 60 FPS with JavaScript bridge communicating with native bridge 60 times a second, right? That's that's a unrealistic expectation even from React Native. So as long as you're not developing a, developing a game or video editor, audio editor, any sort of intensive UI, non-UI performing application you should be good with react native other than that please go with native right let's come to native native obviously has its own disadvantages very clear from the very starting you have like have separate teams for separate platforms i do not really expect someone who has very high proficiency in java or kotlin to have a very high proficiency in objective c it's it's kind of rare right people do exist like that but it's rare. Expensive for startup small companies, for native, that's for sure. If you're a small company or if you're a startup and you do not have a lot of funds to burn, it is expensive to go native because you need, because of the first point, you need to have two teams, two separate teams for the platform and it's expensive to afford teams unless you have got some experienced developers on the board. And again, the more people you get on the board, that creates a little bit of problem in business. You know, that's the business aspect of the business, but the tech aspect of the business aspect of the business is 
basically it would cost you money right again it takes too much time and applications go out of sync for example your ios team might not develop a feature because they are on a vacation or they are outside the country they are uh, the person is sick or for whatever reason and your android app is like shooting up your ios ios app is lagging behind and you know there's that inconsistency in the versions so that's a problem with the react native this would hardly be a problem because um unless you're lazy obviously that you just implement a specific specific functionality only for a single module but that's not really what happens a lot of times right so the question of the r should you use react native here are my two cents on that well it should be pretty much you know expected to be you be answering this question yourself after we have discussed both advantages and disadvantages in great detail but if you're still confused just ask yourself a couple of questions couple or more like are you a developer first of all if not then ask your developers let your developers see this video and decide if you are if you are a developer then are you good with native code um, and not and by code it's it's quite you know ambiguous and just rephrase it are you willing to learn to debug react native without using your mind because that's the most important thing when you're coding with react native and also one more thing people say that go with react native if you have project which you have to deliver in 20 days and you have you're on it all in rush and the stuff is you know going on stuff like that is happening you are in a great hurry do not use react native then use react native only when you have a good amount of time frame especially if you have not worked with react native or native code before and the reason for that is basically if you if you use react native in a very limited time constraint then you might be stuck it might happen that there is some sort of bug some sort of crash which is happening and you might be stuck and waste a lot of time in that um and it it would obviously get resolved but you would lose or lose a lot of time with react native on that one so my advice is like if you are able to you know if you have a lot of time first of all to develop the application react native is a pretty good choice if you do not have a very cpu intensive or very um ui a graphical intensive application react native is a good choice if you do not have a lot of money and if you do not want to have a very big team of developers fighting with each other um you know getting into conflicts with each other on various application features to go with react native on the other hand if you have i would say if you have less time and you want to have a solid application built with the very good community support and if you want to spin it up quickly on at least a single platform go with native code that is your java and kotlin and swift and all stuff like that so if you still have any questions if you're still not clear should you use react native or not let me know in the comments and i'll try to clear your doubts and basically that's all for this video if you liked it please don't forget to like subscribe share and obviously press the bell icon because youtube like just messed up their algorithm so if you do not press the bell icon you might like kind of never see the future videos so it kind of is you know um, messy i'm also fed up with my youtube home timeline but uh, let's just see that's how youtube works so yeah eventually that's all for this one and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe, share and press the bell icon and I'll see you then in the next one. Bye bye.